Welcome back everyone. We have a beautiful run up for you right now. We have Bioshock, no minor skips from Benedictator. Benny, take it away. Hello everybody. All right, yeah, Benedictator here. Nice to see you guys. That was um, an excellent run. So I've, I've seen like some screenshots and, and uh, clips of, of Greece before, but never watched an actual full playthrough of it. Um, beautiful. Anyways, I just wanted to to say that I really appreciated that run. It was really cool. Um, otherwise, uh, Bioshock time. Okay. So I was here a couple days ago with some Bioshock 2 all collectibles, which is that that run is just a lot with all the collecting. This this runs a little less um, chaotic and all over the place. Um, no minor skips is uh, kind of a weird category. I'll kind of explain what it is during the little intro cutscene. Um, but otherwise, we can pretty much get get ready to rock and roll here. So we'll give you a little countdown. We'll go ahead and get started in five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay, so this is um, just like a little intro level. Uh, just making our way down to Rapture, etc., etc. Um, yeah, so so no minor skips. Uh, let me let me kind of explain. So so there is a no major skips category, um, which I, I feel like that is a uh, you know a somewhat recognizable category. It's it's not in every community, but I've seen no major skips in in other uh, speedrun communities. Um, and so this is basically just the inverse of that. So any any tricks that aren't allowed in no major skips are basically allowed in this version of the run. So it's it's kind of a meme run. Like it's not super memey, but the run itself is just kind of a meme of the no major skips category. Um, so yeah, we'll be there. Basically, oh, I almost it's it's muscle memory. I almost did a trick right there. I I gotta remember no no tricks other than the major tricks. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, so so there's basically three. There's only three tricks that I'll be doing here. Three major tricks that I'll be doing, um, which basically lets us skip the entire levels. Um, so that's that's what this runs about. It's basically glitchless, except for three specific tricks that we do throughout the run. However, this run is going to be changing significantly in the future. Actually, it already has changed. Um, I just didn't want to implement the new tricks because that would throw throw the time off for our our estimate off and all that stuff um but yeah i just kind of want to explain that so we we recently in the last month or so um kpc one of our, our bioshock runners discovered a new trick that lets us uh clip through walls um so this this particular category is i think i think the world record is now like 12 minutes shorter or maybe it, it might be like 12 to 15 minutes shorter than than it used to be so it's a pretty significant skip and even the any percent run um i think we shaved off like 10 per, 10 minutes in the any percent run too so it's a pretty uh pretty significant find especially for a game that came out in 2007 you, you think we would have figured out all uh all the big skips all the major tricks you know but you know, that's how it goes sometimes and it's it was just kind of the result of clowning around um but yeah, so that's what we got going on here. Um, so this this might be I mean, I'm pretty I feel like it's pretty safe to say that this is the last time that this version of this run um, will be ran for a marathon. I, I have to imagine that anytime this this category gets ran in the future, um, it'll be the new updated strats. Um, wait till you hear about yeah Ocarina of Time glitches. Are there new ones? I, I don't keep up with the Ocarina of Time uh, community too much, but I know they got some crazy ones, um, but also we. So there are some donation incentives, as, as they've been saying. Um, as as far as I understand, the uh, the harvesting of the little sisters, the killing of the little sisters, is in the lead. Uh, but we do still have a little bit of time. We got probably about another ten to twelve minutes um, before we'll have to close that off. So if you guys want to change the uh, change the result of that, there is still time to get some donations in. Um, you voted to harvest. I know we got we, these. That it's some bloodthirsty people in in the uh, Ospax community here <laughs> with with Bioshock too. It, with the evil ending was chosen as well, which I'm I'm all in for harvesting little sister because if if you speed run Bioshock one, um, the little sisters are not your friends. <laughs> they can they can kill your run, and they have killed uh, they've killed killed runs of mine in the past before. So I'm. I'm I'm not shy about harvesting a little sister, but like I say, there is there is still time to uh, tip the balance there. 
Otherwise, there is what Cold Lyoko, I I believe is the name of the next game. There's there's that incentive as well, and uh, I'll just say a, a vote for Team Yolo Swag is a vote for victory. That was that was my uh, my name that I submitted for that. So so there's still more things to uh, toss your money at. But yeah, anyways, we're almost done with this cutscene. This this first level is gonna be very cutscene heavy. There's there's a few cutscenes in this game, but for the most part, it's I'm pretty action-packed the whole way through. Here we go. You have a new leader for that incentive. Uh-oh. I know, I think I heard some other people were tossing out some other names for that. Yeah. Oh, also, um, so there's, this is not, there's nothing we can do about this, but there's kind of a little graphical bug that's kind of cool, and I'll show you. So the spider spice was just beating up on this bathysphere, and she jumped away, but... If we look up here, she kind of just hangs out there and boop, just disappears after a little while, which is kind of goofy. But alright, here we go. There's also this this piece of paper that's always levitating. I always, I think that's, I don't know, pretty neat. I don't know why it's like that. Um, but there's that. I, I just like to show that off as well. The levit levitating piece of paper that's, that's always there. Alright. Grab our crowbar. There's kind of like a little R RNG manipulation thing here. Um, if we jump up the left side of that couch and take damage from it, sometimes we can get that splicer to jump towards us. He didn't do it here because he's a big jerk. That's fine. All right, here we go. Another another cutscene. Like I say, this first level is fairly cutscene heavy. I know it's pretty early in, but if you have any in incentive or not incentive, any donations or any announcements to make, now would be a good time. We uh, do have one here. We have a $125 and 10 cent donation here from Aggie who says, as promised, here is my final time as a dono. Put this towards making the file name Code Lyoko Twirtle. That puts Twirtle in the lead at $125 and 10 cents. Soap behind at $40 and YOLO swag, sorry, Benny, at $20. One can dream. One can dream. Well, that's very nice. I've um I've submitted that name for a handful of different marathons and it has yet yet to catch on and and win for some reason. People people don't love Yellow Swag, but uh but someday someday that name will get in. <laughs> I believe I believe in myself. I believe in the power of Yellow Swag. All right. So all things considered, um, pretty cool cutscenes here in the Bioshock game. This game's got, uh, in my opinion, it's got like a really cool intro. Just the intro of us going into Rapture, but also like the cutscenes here in this first level. I think they do a really good job of setting up the game and, and creating a nice kind of spoopy, cool environment. Um, good, good, uh, good storytelling in this in this game. Hector Yolo Swag. I'm not sure Hector Yolo Swag. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe I'm maybe I'm uh, ignorant to, to some sort of a reference. Boink! This is kind of cool. The plane that we were riding in early crashes through the little glass tube there. Um, we can keep the momentum. Like if we hop on that suitcase back there, we can keep the momentum uh, of speed by like hopping hopping in the water. We move a little faster if we hop. There are some visual triggers that we're gonna trigger by looking in certain directions here. There we go. All right. That was speedy enough. Doing all right so far. Boink. Open up. There we go. There we go. All right. Seven twenty, seven twenty-six. Wow, we're getting really close to that. That's really nice. Cool. Been a pretty, pretty good, successful marathon. So we can sort of hop out of this elevator a little bit early um, when we get to the top. It's kind of goofy, but like we can just hop through the barrier here once this reaches a certain height. Right about there. Say, I need that gun. Give it to me. 
They destroyed our bodies, our minds. Here's another another big cutscene that we get to watch here. We can actually skip all these cutscenes in the any percent run. We do this weird this weird trick where we um spam a few buttons when we're collecting the electro bolt. Um and it allows us to like hop away from the uh, gatherer's garden. Like we still collect the the electro bolt, but we jump away from the gatherer's garden, and we're able to avoid the uh, cutscene by doing that. And it does this weird thing where for the rest of this level, it's trying to suck us in towards that that gatherer's garden. So we have to like do a weird, annoying hopping mechanic uh, throughout the rest of the level. Obviously, we don't we don't do that in this run. Um, but it is like a really cool trick. Right. Don't mess with the little sister. Don't mess with little sisters, otherwise he's gonna make the big daddies angry. He wallops on this dude here. Bonk. Bonk. Yikes. Yikes, guy. I'm gonna get out of this room in just a second. Once this little cutscene's over with. This way and try to uh, make sure that we shoot this person. If we don't shoot her, then she likes to run away and it wastes a lot of time. Woo, that was good. Okay, it's actually kind of hard to hit those two. If, if you jump here and shoot them early, um, you just save a little bit of time by spawning this next group of splicers. Wow, that was really clean. This might, this might, I don't know, maybe will be a goal split. That was, that was really fast. Usually I have trouble hitting those first two splicers in that stairway, but uh. We nailed it. Nailed it. There's another cool little trick you can do in this level. We're not going to do it here in this run, but like if you come here and just zap the door with Electro Bolt, um, it'll end the level early and you won't have to watch this cutscene. It's it's a neat thing. We'll let this, we'll let this cutscene fail. So tell me, friend. So tell me, friend. Pretty happy about about how that last little sequence played out. I always try to hit hit those uh, all those waves of splicers with the pistol, but sometimes it's hard to get it. Pretty happy with it. It only saves like a tiny bit of time if you do it correctly, but you know how it be. Every every little second counts. So you guys will beat up on the glass trying to bust through and get us and throw behind us all. Just a second. Fantastic speedrun for a fantastic cause. Yeah, I like to think so. Get out! Get out, new. Not a gold split. Oh, that's too bad. But still pretty decent. All right. So one kind of cool thing about this little hacking sequence coming up, it'll always be the same, um, unless like if I were to hack this and come back and do this hacking sequence again. Then it would be different, but as long as it's like a fresh load of the game, it'll always be uh, the same sequence, so that's kind of nice. Yeah. Alright. We need to go fight Dr. Simon. He's got the key that lets us get out of this level. Um, we need to go find him and, and get the key from him. That's, that's kind of the whole main thing about this level. Alright. Through that little ghost sequence. Come over here and take care of a couple splicers. Let's loot them. There we go. Get all the loots. Alright. Getting a little lag spike. That happens in this game. Grab those armor piercing rounds. We're gonna want those. They come in useful in one specific spot in this run coming up. Alright. So we're gonna get one of our very important um Plasmids incinerate. It's gonna help us to basically do death death warps. That's that's the main use of it. Our death warp plasmid. Nice. 
Come on down this way. We'll get our plasma. Sometimes this guy likes to try to body block us. We got a lot of people trying to body block us. He didn't get in my way too bad, but if you shoot that guy, if he body blocks you, you can just shoot him in the head with a pistol to get him out of your way. That's, that's the easy way to do it. This audio diary tends to be a very important one. We won't be picking it up in this run just because uh, we're not going to be taking advantage of its use. Um, but we use that to do audio diary skips just to blast through dialogue and get certain doors open faster and stuff during, during the other normal runs. Um, now we have our, our other, like, our second super important uh, plasmid, which is telekinesis. Um, we end up using that. It, it, telekinesis is like your big, big bad plasmid um, that does all the damage. Um, telekinesis is like crazy, crazy OP. It's super, super powerful, um, which is kind of goofy, but yeah, telekinesis is the one to have. Okay. We're going to grab his grenade, blow up that door. Usually you have to wait for, like, um... You have to wait for a, a guy on the ledge to start throwing grenades at you, but if you, um... If you, uh... Sorry. Grab his grenade from him, then you can do it early. Okay, we're at a really good amount of health. This is basically where we want to be. So, we are gonna trigger some invincibility frames after this guy busts the glass open. Um, and then we can get a death warp going, like, real, real fast, so... We can control how fast we die by triggering invincibility frames. It's, it's a whole thing. Let's get some Eve just so we don't run out accidentally. That looked like a minor skip. What looked like a minor skip? Oh, the uh, grabbing the grenade. I know that one. That's kind of a. Um, I think that's what you're probably talking about. It's kind of a bit controversial, I guess, right? Because it pretty much seems like a uh, minor skip, but uh, I don't know. It's allowed. Be very nice, uh, very OP ability to have reset. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, that 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 was not a mistake. That is uh, legit. Okay, so save versus harvest. Let me know if there's any change. Ooh, get out of my way, please, lady. Um, that part no, is coming. Up. No change. No change. We're harvest still is yeah. in the lead. Harvest yeah. is in the lead. All right, we got some cold-blooded killers here. That's that's fair. Like I say, I I have no qualms about taking care of a little sister. They've ruined many a run for me. Um, and we'll we'll see how they do it at the end of the run. It's it's. Pretty much the last level of the run is where the little sisters have a tendency to, to ruin ruin runs, and maybe you'll see why they're they're so hated in the uh, Bioshock speedrun community. Um, so I don't. There's something something about the way that we run these runs that causes these cutscenes to get all goofy, and we'll see it when we hit Rapture Central Control too. But for some reason, during these cutscenes. The camera likes to pan down. Normally, we'd be looking up at Tenenbaum, and we'd be looking up at the little sister. But, but for some reason, something about the way that we do things, it causes the, the camera to pan down like this, so we just stare at the floor like a boss. Um, kind of goofy. It's a nice-looking floor, though. Let's be real. Let's just appreciate that. All right, time to harvest. i got to remind myself so I don't forget. Normally, it, it takes like an extra second or two to harvest, so normally I spam the uh, the saving button. Harvest is H. Okay, there we go. Here it is. <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of brutal. I, it's not like too graphic, but I don't know. Poor little sisters, I guess. <laughs> there we go. The floor is made of floor. You noticed that. Yeah, there you go. There you go. All right, there's that. Got it. Got it. No little sisters for us to worry about anymore. We harvested them. So there's a, another little bit of like, um, not really like RNG manipulation, but if we if we stand in this doorway while dialogue is playing, it'll like cause that Gathers Garden to open up a little early. Not exactly sure why that's the case, but sometimes I like to see if I can get the bodies to stick up there. Yeah, there we go. So we don't really need to buy anything there. We just need to basically interact with that in order for this door to open. For some reason. For some reason, that's the way it is. So now we can get out of this level. We can get out of here. See if there's any more bodies for me to loot. I believe I pretty much got all the Sometimes there's a splicer hanging out here. There's not a splicer here now, so you don't have to worry about it. I like to grab one of those bodies just in case. So it's kind of a good idea. Oh, I'm surprised that didn't kill that lady. It's a good idea when you're running around to sort of like ha always have a body grabbed with telekinesis just in case somebody gets in your way. You can telekinesis it out of the way, so telekinesis it at, at the enemy so that they don't body block you. 
It's a thing. It's just a thing. All right. Once bid war left, yes indeed. Once bid war left, indeed. And there's still time for Yolo Swag to make a comeback. All right. Uh, so in the other runs, we actually kill this big daddy, but we don't have to worry about him in this particular category. Ooh, all right. Say, so hopefully I don't mess up that little corner hop. Got it. Take care of that guy just so you can get around him. And we want to grab this turret to take care of this spider splicer in here. This is Peach. Peach is going to block our entrance. He's not going to let us out of this level until we take a picture of some spider splicers for him. So that's going to be our main thing that we do here is uh, we got to get the camera and take some pictures. That's, that's what we got going on. Loots. There we go. So there is a way to do this fight. Hopefully we can... We're going to hit her with this turret and hope... Oops. Uh, hopefully get her to back up pretty much straight backwards if we can. Peach, that's very rude. That was pretty fast as far as the fight goes. Sometimes she'll wander all over the place to the left or the right or go behind the pillar and it just takes her a longer time to run up to the center here and jump up. But that was, that was pretty fast. I'll take it. All right. Now we'll wait for this door to open for us. Something to keep you alive. Something to keep you alive. Go get that camera. All right, Peach, let's go get it. Let's go get it. It's so it, it's kind of goofy. Like my mu everything in my muscle memory it wants me to do these these uh, tricks. So it's it's almost like it's almost more difficult at this point in my speedrunning um, career, I guess. Whatever. But it, it's like. Almost more difficult not to do tricks. That's like so hardwired into my brain to to do all these little glitches. Collect those just for fun. We're not a, that we lose those grenades in a second, so it actually doesn't matter to grab them. But I don't know. Collecting loot is fun, so I guess I do it anyways. <laughs> all right. It's coming to get me. Got all the things. How nice. Alright, there's Spider Splicer number one. Reduce our health a little bit because we're going to be getting ready for a death war in a while. Uh, Alright, we don't want to lose too much more. We don't want to lose too much more health. We don't want to um, accidentally die early. Spider Splicer number two. Got it. And spider splicer number three, right there. Ah, got it. Excellent. We got all of our pictures. We can get out of here. We can get out. All right. We're gonna we're gonna reach for the stars and try to do the fast the fast death warp. Out of my way, please. Nailed it. Nailed it. Kind of a, like kind of a difficult jump. There's like some weird geometry, so if you don't do that jump right, you'll land in the wrong spot and you won't end up in this uh, particular um, beta chamber. You'll you'll spawn in a different beta chamber. So I got it. I took like an extra second to make sure that I I did it correctly, but but we made it. We made it. Okay. There are other places of death warp to uh to make sure you spawn in this V chamber, but that's that's like the fast way to do it. So we wait to pick up this grenade launcher. In a second, we're gonna lose all our weapons, and then we're gonna actually pick up this grenade launcher for real Z's after that. Um, we we would get the grenade launcher back anyways in just a little bit, but if we do it this way, we just get like a little bit of extra ammo for it. And ammo's is nice. It's nice to have ammo. We're gonna come right over here. Got a couple extra grenades. A few extra grenades. And so we... So Peach is gonna spawn here. We're gonna do the Peach fight. He's he's the boss of this level. And if we stand here and look in this direction, then he will spawn to our left every time. So I'm just gonna sit here and wait for a second. 
Wait for him to yell out Atlas, and we'll be ready to rock and roll. Right about now. Atlas. There he is. Got him. Oh, weird. We're getting weird double dialogue from Atlas. I don't. I don't believe I've ever heard that before. It doesn't do anything. That's kind of goofy. All right, we're gonna get pretty much the only uh, weapon upgrade that we care about, and that's a uh, rocket launcher damage increase. Be smooth sailing from here. Let's go. Not bad. Wow, that was a really good time save. What did I do wrong on my PB? I saved like 20, 23 seconds. Trying to make sure. I didn't do any glitches on that level, right? I didn't. I must have just had a really... I, must, I bet I I bet I screwed up the death warp, if I had to guess. I bet I screwed up that, that death warp um, and lost like 20 seconds on my PB. Ooh, oh, bad. oh, all right, we're just gonna reset this jump. All right, point. So this little platform is, um, you walk up it at a snail's pace. It's really goofy. And it's because of, uh, we have V-Sync turned on, um, on or off. Oh, I don't even remember it. I have it set a certain way. And when you have it it's set that way, it causes that specific platform to, you move up it at like a snail's pace. I'm not exactly sure why that's the case, why it would cause that, but. For some reason, that one specific platform makes it makes you crawl up it just super, super, super slow. Um, so you basically have to like jump right when you land, and we put the jump on the scroll button to make it easier. But yeah, you gotta hop, hop right when you land to move up that thing um, smoothly. Kind of, kind of weird. Kind of a weird thing. Can you hear me in there, darling? That's Atlas, our little protagonist that's helping us escape rapture and his wife and kid are allegedly in this uh bathy sphere oh hi spider splicers bonk, bonk. all right we'll get out of here in just a second family out and we'll regroup as soon as we can. Get some loot as we escape, because why not? Oh, you made it in here with me. How nice. Why have you come here? Okay, so the next two levels are gonna be two of our our three major skips. So we're gonna basically skip these next two levels almost entirely. Excuse me, got some hiccups. So let's hope this goes well. Hope this doesn't uh, be goofy for us. Should, should be nice and smooth. Ooh, I gotta move my legs, dog. And he pulls the string. So there's like an element to this game where you can take pictures of enemies and you get like it certain boosts, like damage boosts, or like you take certain certain amount of pictures of, of certain enemies and you get like tonics for it. We don't really care much about those except for one specific type of enemy, the thuggish splicers, which are the melee ones. If you do enough research with these guys, they give you a speed bonus. So take some pictures of her. She's one of them, and we should be able to get it with this guy. There we go. Force boost to the rescue. All right, so we're gonna grab this box. This box is very important. It's gonna allow us to float up in the air and, and, and fly over a trigger. And this is gonna be uh, major skip number one. Coming up, and we can basically leave this level early. Uh, normally, during this level, um, when you get to the end of the level, uh, Ryan is a sneaky, sneaky boy, and he, he locks the door and poisons the air, and you have to go like, Make whole antidote for it. It's it's like a whole thing, um, but in this run, you can skip right over it. 
Oh, that's gonna fall. Uh, I want you to rotate a little bit, Vox. Okay, that's good. Oh, there we go. Make a quick save, just so nothing sad happens. We Got it. Nice. Nice and smooth. Not too bad at all. So that is major skip number one. We we jump over the trigger that causes that, that door to lock, and, and, uh, and we can just move on. All right. And here is coming up is going to be major skip number two. Same thing, basically. We're going to, um, instead of hopping over a trigger, we're just hopping over a barrier. But we're doing the same thing. We're going to fling way up in the air. There you go. The section eight says I. Boing. Nice. Nice. Nice and smooth. Boink. And hopefully I can find the other end of the level. Should be like right up here. Oh, it's gonna be goofy to me. Alright, we're gonna go with our backup strat. Looking straight up in the air and hopping like this. There it is. If you jump just right off that ledge, like you can look in a certain area and the end of the level trigger will be right there, but but if you if you if you don't get it quite right you can always just look up in the center like i did there we got it so that's major skip number two and we only got one more but the the last one is coming up uh, more towards the uh the end of the game so play through this next set of levels normally and kill the son of a gun Bonk. Bonk. Get some grenades. I think we're probably pulling grenades to be honest. Just hop over that. Oh, that was nice and smooth. Every once in a while, I'll, I'll hop incorrectly there and end up uh, end up uh, having to walk around. It's a little extra time. All right. So we just gotta wait for some dialogue to play here, and then this door behind us will open up. And while we're waiting, we'll play play a little mini game where we try to uh, get these bodies to stay up there. See if we can eat them correctly. Come on, be nice to me. Be nice to me. We got one. Ooh, ooh, that one was a little rough. Oh, I thought she was gonna stay up there for a second. I thought we were good. We got two. Let's go get a third. Still got time. We might be able to get all four bodies up here. Oh, no luck with this one. Yeet. It's neat to yeet. Uh, oh, oh, I thought we had him for a second. Well, this this guy's being a little stubborn. He doesn't want to hang up. Go hang out with your friends. Go hang out with your friends. Right, I got I got one more try. No luck. Only two. Sad day. All right. We're going to come over here with our grenade launcher and blast these enemies out of our way. They like the body block. Oh, hi. What are you doing there? Wow. We're getting all up in my way. I like to play some fire for those guys. A lot of the times they'll chase after me. All right, so we're gonna deal with some big daddies here. Let's reload our ammo. There we go, that's number one taken care of. Oh, oh, I did too much damages. That's all right, the Vita chamber is literally right above us, so that's just fine. And I did more damages than I thought there. Can't help it. All right. It's too close to those explosions. We're gonna deal with another big daddy. You should either be up there. Oh, he is up here. Usually he's not up here. All right. There we go. Big daddy number two dealt with. And then we're gonna come on over here. Grab a first aid kit. Why not? Why not? We're gonna get this audio diary over here. 
And after this is done playing, we can start collecting components that we need to build an EMP bomb. That's kind of like the big thing that we're doing down here is building an EMP bomb to, to bust this place up. Alright, we we'll use the auto hack here. You're gonna trigger our invincibility frames and do a death warp after collecting this next thing. We need to hit that and collect this. And we can hop back in this little electrical trap and do a death warp. Alright. Alright, so now that that dialogue is finished playing, we can collect our components. There it is, there's component number one. Component number two will be at the end of this hallway. We're gonna get ourselves ready for a death warp. Nobody's body blocking us, that's nice. There we go. Like this. There we go, got it. Very clean, very nice. Wire well, cluster number two of four. We got another big daddy to loot at the end of this hallway and another ionic gel container to collect. We're rocking and rolling. Can we get from all the way over there? There we go. Nice. Ooh, whoa, whoa. Nice little uh, lag spike there. Our last little thing to collect is right there and we are ready to build our bomb. Let's go get it. We'll start getting ready for another death warp here while we're building our bomb. There we go. Got our bomb, we can do our death warp. We can do the last little sequence of this level. Hi guy, leave me alone please. You too, leave me alone please. And you. Wow, all the enemies are here. Usually there's not so many enemies in this hallway. It's fine. It's fine, it's not a big deal. Blow up these guys so they don't mess with us too much. Get this and set up some uh, proxy grenades. Alright. Get ready for a fight here. Here we go. So we set up those proxy grenades to hopefully blow up any enemies that are going to try to come at us and, and mess with us. There's enemy number one. Out of the way. That guy's coming, but he's about to get blown up. There it is. There's, there's his body. Oh, this guy. Oh, he's going to he's gonna hit us with some fireballs. He's not going to run out far enough. Alright, he's going to spawn and probably blow up. Oh, 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 they're coming. They're doing the damage. They're not standing on my grenades. That's alright. That's alright. We're almost done with this part. We got it. Got it. We're gonna get ready for a death warp in a little bit here. Bing bong. All right. Take some damage from this thing. Here we go. We got all the all the invincibility frames triggered. We'll be ready for our death warp in a little bit here. Get that. See if we can hop up here and hit this thing a little early. There we go. Nice. Got it. Got it. Well, I put the fire right out here, so as soon as we enter this exit that little area, we can do our death warp. Death warps are allowed as long as we're not traveling through locked doors. Hi, person. Stay away from me. Stay away from me, person. Alright, so we're gonna get our grenade out again. There's gonna be, um, at the end of this hallway, when we pass through this door, there'll be somebody trying to body block us, and we can just get rid of them real quick by hitting them with a grenade. There he is. Out of my way, please. Did it hit that right? Yes, I did. Okay, just wanna make sure. You guys are doing all the damages. Please stop. There we go. Uh, Alright. No wait for a little dialogue to finish, and as soon as it's done playing through this double will transition over to RCC. So RCC is kind of like, I don't know, I like to call it like a transitional level, or like pretty much like a story cutscene level, so 
Lots of cutscenes coming up in this next level. In the end, all that matters to me. And if you got any donations or anything to read, now would be a, a, a good time for that. Well, I would just want to once again plug that we do have a another incentive coming up for Code Lyoko file name. Twirl is in the strong, strong lead with $125 and 10 cents. Soap is pretty far behind here on $40 and YOLO swagged on 20 bucks. They still do have some open slots as well. So if you want to get some uh, new names on the board, feel free to do that exclamation mark donate. Yeah. Still time to get more donations in for sure. Um, so there's like this invisible wall. This is where we want to go, but there's like an invisible wall here. We can actually jump over it by jumping on top of this vending machine. Um, and we could travel over it and pass on through if we wanted to. However, that would be a cheat. Cheats are not allowed. So we'll wait. But it's kind of cool. All thing. This is a really cool like level as far as cutscenes or like story elements go. This is like almost like the M Night Shyamalan twist. This is the twist part of the game, twist part of the story, where you find out uh, spoilers. By the way, for a game that came out in 2007, um, this is the part of the game where you find out your uh, your little guide who's been helping you this whole time is actually um, the big baddie. Normally, during the other other runs, we would skip past all of this, all these cutscenes by doing some weird warping trickery, but uh, in this category, we get to watch it all, which is kind of cool, because like I said, this is a really cool cutscene. Um, so I had mentioned earlier in the run, in the Medical Pavilion level, that something, something about the way that we do these runs, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but something about it, uh, like it doesn't happen during like a normal casual playthrough. So there's there's something about what we're doing that cuts the tweak out. But uh, during this next cutscene, the camera is just gonna pan down towards the floor, and we'll end up spending most of the cutscene looking at Andrew Ryan's uh, shoes. Um, but to be fair, the nice shoes. We can just appreciate that for a while. And then this place. Which I guess is all right, because the cutscene that's coming up is is pretty graphic and brutal. Um, so we we don't necessarily have to watch a man uh, get savagely beat to death. We can we can just stare at his shoes instead. Spoken by the kindly master. Was a man sent to kill, or a slave? A man chooses. A slave obeys. I guess I all things considered, Bioshock has some some pretty cool dialogue, some pretty cool story elements, some pretty cool scripting. It's it's, it's good stuff. Good stuff. All right, definitely one of your favorite video game moments. Yeah, I, I would have to agree. Yeah, all right. You can you can see the screen's already kind of slowly starting to pan down. And after after a little bit, we'll be staring at the floor. To Ryan's office and kill the son of a bitch. That's a naughty word. Sit. Would you kindly? Stand. Stand. Would uh. you kindly? Run. Stop. Turn. There we go. A man chooses. Looking down. Looking down in shame. A slave obeys. There we go. Time to look at shoes. Kill. Ark. Um, it's just goofy. Shoes. It's just goofy that this happens. Top 10 anime betrayals of all time. This, yeah, fair enough. I'll take it. Alright. 
here's the end of that cutscene. And we go get to listen to a bunch of uh, dialogue from Atlas slash Fontaine. Now, would you kindly put it in that machine? All right. I guess I really have no choice. Now we get to listen to the big reveal. Yeah, I, I feel like that's really cool storytelling elements of this game because it's like it's there's only one way to get through the game and it's by listening to atlas when he gives you instructions but like it also works for storytelling elements by by him saying would you kindly it's just it's just really clever they did, they did a pretty good job with the the scripting of this game why did he make jack kill himself yeah well so all so spoilers like i say for a game that came out almost uh what, like 16 17 years ago something like that so you are Andrew Ryan's son in this game. That's what's going on. And so after Andrew Ryan figures it out, he's like, I can't kill you because you're my kid. I just can't do it. So instead, he has you kill Andrew Ryan. He, he has you kill, kill your father. That's what's going on. But so just like, like a, um, a patricide thing, he, he, he can't bring himself to, to kill his own son. Um, but one thing that I always thought, okay, so we have these Vita chambers, and these Vita chambers are tuned to genetic frequencies. So like, if if you are if your genes are are set to the Vita chambers, if you die, you'll you'll respawn. So I always it, my theory is that Andrew Ryan lives after that because why would he not why would he not set his own gene frequency to the Vita chamber? So if he gets killed, he would respawn, right? You kill him, but wh why? Isn't wouldn't he just respond at some Vita chamber? So, in my head, this is not canon, but this is Benedictator canon. Um, Andrew Ryan is is still alive somewhere out in the Rapture universe. Son, he is disappointed. That's basically exactly it. In fact, he he does have a line where he says the uh, that you are his greatest disappointment. That that happened just a little bit ago. Does anybody speedrun the remastered version of this? Yes, the remastered version um, is. Is definitely a thing and it gets ran on, on a regular enough basis um, I think it's, it's generally considered that OG Bioshock is like the better version because there are some tricks that you um, that you can do in OG Bioshock that you cannot do in remastered I don't run remastered not yet I plan on doing it in the future um, but I do know that it's it's slightly different in certain ways but yeah Bioshock 1 remastered Bioshock 2 remastered those are, are all all runs that exist. Complicate villain, yeah, basically. There's always a lighthouse. Yeah, there's so there's some cool things about Bioshock Infinite that um like tie into the reg regular Bioshock. The all there's always a lighthouse, there's always a girl or whatever. That's that's one of those famous Bioshock Infinite light uh Bioshock Infinite quotes. But there's also um so when you get to Rapture here in the very beginning of the game in the intro all the way at the beginning of this run. There's a spider splicer that greets you and she says, is it someone new? That's kind of her line. Um, in Bioshock uh, Infinite, when you first reach Columbia, there's a priest that baptizes you. And as soon as he sees you, he says the same thing. He says, is it someone new? Um, so it's just kind of like a cool little throwback reference to the original Bioshock. It's a neat thing. It's a neat thing. We're just kind of waiting, waiting for a little bit of a, a little bit of dialogue before these doors will open up for us. Really need a new Bioshock? Wait long enough? Yeah. Can I do Infinite Run too? I do run Bioshock Infinite. However, I'm not as good at the Bioshock Infinite runs as I am at uh, Bioshock One and Two. Um, oh, did we get on top? Hey, we got it. That's kind of a tough jump, but I made it. It doesn't do anything. It's just fun to be able to jump on top of her head. Um, yeah, and speaking of a new Bioshock, they are, it is a thing that is actively being worked on. We haven't heard any significant news from it for quite a while, but there is a uh, studio called Cloud Chamber that is working on the new Bioshock as we speak, as, as far as we know still. Unless, unless something sad has happened and that's changed, um, that, that, is, that is the word that a new Bioshock is being worked on. But like I say, pretty much no details on what it's about or how far in development they are. They've, they've been pretty tight-lipped with it. Um, 
But what we have been able to glean from some of the, like, hiring positions that they've been putting out there, it sounds like it's going to take place in a brand new location. So I doubt we'll be going back to Rapture. Doubt we'll be going back to Columbia. Um, and there are kind of some hints that it might be, like, kind of open-worldy. I'm going to guess almost like the Far Cry games or something. Um, but we'll see, you know, that's, that's all. That's all kind of conjecture at the moment. We'll, we'll see when it actually gets released. If, if and when it actually gets released. I hope it will. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So this is kind of a new trick. I don't really want to call it a trick. All right, hold on. Hit seven. What a foe. So there's like a new time save. Usually we go up to this elevator and like go on to the next part of the run right away. But we have discovered that if you just wait till um, the goal objective marker pops up, which will happen in like, I don't know, like 20, 30 seconds. It seems like it takes forever. It seems like you're losing so much time. But if you wait for the objective marker to pop up, it actually saves time in the long run. Um, so what we're doing here in this level, what's actually happening is... Uh, um, Atlas slash Fontaine has sort of like taken control of our mind by like triggering a certain um, catchphrase and we need to collect two sets of a lot 192 serum that'll remove the effects of his, his brainwashing so we're we're collecting those we're collecting one in this level and we collect the second lot 192 in the next level so that's that's kind of kind of what's happening here there it is now we go up now that little objective marker has popped up, we can go. New location would be dope. Yeah, there's um, there's a lot of uh, ideas about where the new, the new setting is gonna be, but you know we don't really know. Some people say in space. Some people say like maybe underground, like in a mountain or something. Um, the spell, the space idea, I, I kind of doubt because that's basically what System Shock. One and two is 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 like Bioshock in space. Those are Bioshock is kind of like the spiritual successor of System Shock. There's Lot 192. Um, but who knows? Maybe they'll maybe they'll go back to space. Come on, let me go. Let me jump over this. There we go. Wow, these guys are all all up in the way. Pardon me. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'm glad the only reason no Bioshock is uh, because of Infinite. Bioshock is because Infinite was used as a benchmark game. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Ken Levine not involved in the new one? That is correct. Um, Ken, Ken Levine is not part of the team for, for the new Bioshock. He was also not part of the team for Bioshock 2. Um, and in my opinion, Bioshock 2 is, is a very good game. Um, it is kind of considered, like, maybe not the best Bioshock, but as far as speedruns go, I don't know, Bioshock 2 might actually be my favorite. It's a lot of fun. Um, but yes, no, that is that is absolutely correct that Ken Levine is not part of the team for the new Bioshock. Threes. But I'm sure it'll still be good. I hope. He says optimistically. All right. Here we go. Underground in caves and ravines would be amazing. I think so, too. Almost like a dwarven city or something. Sky was the best. I do like the um, cloudy, kind of sunny setting of Columbia better than Rapture a little bit. I think it's it's a little more um, pleasant to look at, but the underwater city of Rapture is, is pretty uh, visually um, impressive as well. Okay, so we're, we have a lot of health. I actually want to... Um, get real low with my health. I, I want to get set up for a, a death warp soon. So I'm going to hit that guy, have him do some damage to me. actually wish he would have done a little more damage. It's all right. We can always use a grenade if we need to. We'll let these guys beat up on us a little bit. Yes. Do all the damages, please. Do more damages, please. All right. Yeah, we'll probably use a grenade in a little bit to uh, do some extra damage. Oh, nice little corner hop. Let's see. Is it gonna bring us where we need to be? No, it isn't. So I'm gonna toss a grenade there. 
There we go. Now we've hit our invincibility frames. Out of, oh, wow. Out of my way. Please don't come kill me, somebody. All right, we're good. We've got that. Now that we have that, we are ready to do a death war. Got it. Is this the first game underwater? Yes. This, this game here is underwater. If you can see, like... Through these glass tubes, we are under the ocean. Well, I guess it's kind of hard to tell, but we are under the under the water in this game. Get away from me, guys! Leave me alone. Grab this floaty barrel and have take care of these tools so they don't get in our way. Ooh, there we go. Slow elevator, slow elevator ride down. Space, you do Borderlands like the free sequel. Yeah, space would be neat. Um, actually, like infinite slaps. Yeah, I was a big fan. There, it seems like people either loved it or hated it, and and it has to do with like the ending of the game. The ending of the game gets like really weird with like different dimensions and travel and space. Know, it, it gets it gets a little weird with. Some of the storytelling elements and it threw off a lot of people i like it i think it's pretty dang cool but but some people were not a huge fan um of the like the very end of the game with, with some of the storytelling elements this is our third and final major skip of the game um there's a trigger that we're going to jump over um that's going to allow us to, to skip this whole level we're going to be able to sneak through a door before this guy locks it so that's that's fun Be, uh, wait, what? I want to read what, what one of you guys is saying in a second. We're going to grab this, take care of these bots, this little explodey barrel. I don't remember much. You got jump scared and was yelled at for being too loud and stopped playing the game. That's funny. Yeah, there are like a few, a couple jump scares in, in the original Bioshock. If, I, I bet I know which one you're talking about. Because um, it got me too. All right. We're going to set ourselves right up here on the corner of this carpet. I'm gonna look at that specific spot, do a quick save, just in case I don't get this first try. This jump, oh yeah, there we go. This jump, um, can be a little goofy, it can be a little tough. Oh, oh. nope, nope. Last chance, kid. Did we get it? We got it. Alright. By jumping at just the right spot, he's gonna T-pose for us. Hi, guy. Um, you always got T-pose to assert dominance, that's very important. Um, but yeah, there, there we go. That is the third and final major skip of the game. We jump over jump over a trigger that locks us in place and we're able to, to move on through the level quickly. Okay. So we're gonna get this little sister to come out here and we are gonna stand in this specific spot and wait for her to move right oh, there. Alright. I think I did that right. We'll see. So this this part of the game is is why runners tend to not be huge fans of the little sisters i think i did it right so i think she'll be running but depending on on when you start moving etc etc um when she gets through this door she'll either start walking or running if you did it correctly she'll start running if you did not do it correctly she'll start walking let's see how we do you'd be nice to me little sister i did it wrong so she's gonna start walking there we go another run ruin actually i wasn't on pb pay so it's fine but had I been on PB pace, this would be a very, very sad moment. Um, so she's going to be walking. She'll start running eventually, but she's walking for now. Um, and she's going to be going all slow, but she's going to be, like, basically taunting us, like, hurry up, Mr. B. Angels don't wait for slow folks while you're waiting for her. It's, it's infuriating. Like, especially if it just killed a run, it's, it's enough to, like, make you hate these little sisters. Hurry up, Mr. B. Angels don't wait for slow folks. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just move forward and try to take care of some of these enemies. Sometimes if you kill these enemies up here, it'll cause her to start moving faster. Is that enough to get you to start running? There we go. There we go. All right, she's not being too horrible to us. Hurry, hurry, Mister Bubbles. Hurry, Mister Bubbles. Last chance, kid. Very early in the game. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure in Medical Pavilion. I'm, I'm pretty sure I know which one you're talking about because it definitely spooked me too. It's it, If I know which one you're thinking of, it's it's the one where the room fills up with fog 
And then after, um, after the room's done filling up with fog, there's like an enemy right behind you, basically. Alright, so this is how this level goes. We fight three waves of splicers as the little sister is harvesting the bodies. And each wave consists of six splicers, so it's, it's a thing. It's a thing. And here's kind of like I say, telekinesis is like super OP plasmid. We can just one-shot all these fools. Got him. It's pretty good. It came out pretty quick there. Alright, let's go, little sister. Point, point. Hurry, Mr. B. Oh, apparently I moved too far. If you go too far away from these little sisters, they'll stop, they'll stop moving. They get screwed. They get screwed and stop moving. Alright, we're gonna do a quick save here. Sometimes the little sister here likes to, to soft lock, so we'll hope, hopefully that won't happen. Play some proximity grenades there for any splices that might decide to come down that way. Oh, hi. You did not hit that grenade. Thought I heard somebody down here. Oh, where'd that body go? Uh... I hit you with that. Pretty pretty sure I hit you with that, man. Madam. Alright, no soft lock. That's good. Yeah, some sometimes that little sister likes to soft lock there. It's a sad thing when that happens. We good. I made the quick save there just in case to be safe. Always a smart thing to do. Right. Alright. All Bioshock games are, are good, at least it doesn't throw shit in your face like The Last of Us 2. Never played The Last of Us 2, but I would also agree that the Bioshock games are are generally generally pretty dang good. I'm I'm a fan of them. Even even Bioshock 2, which is kind of considered to be the least of the Bioshock games. As far as story-wise, I'd, I'd probably agree. Bioshock 2 uh, leaves something to be desired. Um, but gameplay-wise, Bioshock 2 is very strong. Very strong, in my opinion, at least. All right, so there's some enemies hiding out under the water, and we'll just take them out with these crossbow bolts. Crossbow is basically like your sniper rifle in this game. It's very powerful. Very powerful. Don't be a slow poke, Mr. B. Okay, I won't. Please stop that, sir. Please stop that, sir. Come on, come on. Where, where are you going? Don't run backwards. Don't do that. Oh, alright. Alright. This is the final, final little gathering sequence. We're just gonna take care of this last wave of splicers, then we'll be uh, making our way towards the end game here. Got you. Yeet, yeet. It's neat to yeet. I see Adam, Mr. B. Where you guys? Where you guys hiding? Come on now. They're being slow folks. Got you guys. Nice. Hurry, Mr. Bubbles. I will hurry. All right. That was the last little sequence of gathering. Now this little sister is gonna take us to the end of this level. And on to the boss fight. So we're getting up towards the last last few minutes of the run. Give you a heads up when we're getting a little closer, but we're we're on our way there. All right, we're gonna get our regular grenade out. We're gonna fight one last big daddy in a second. We let her run ahead and start opening the door. Otherwise, she'll kind of get spooked and stop what she's doing during this little big daddy fight. But we are good. Time to go, Mr. B. Yes, indeed. I agree. All right, we'll get our proxy grenades out. So the Fontaine fight, the, the, the boss fight, is like a three-phase fight. And we can basically instantly kill the first two phases by placing some uh, proximity grenades on the ground. It's a, a pretty simple scripted fight.
Um, so we will we will get that all set up, and then we're gonna finish him off with a, a few normal grenades for his third phase. Your internet, please don't pay up, play up now. Yeah, no, <laughs> that was a bad time for the uh, your internet to be bugging out. We're almost at the end here. I shot two and, and Dark Souls two. Yeah, the sequels. It, it it can be that way sometimes, right? All right, so we probably got about a minute and a half, two minutes left here, and and I will give you a good countdown when we're getting real close. But yeah, we're getting getting real close to the end. Um. But yeah, be ready for it. But yeah, like I say, so Bioshock 2 is generally considered the worst, but speedrunning wise, it, it might be my favorite. Bioshock 2 is, is good for speedruns. Um, and, and in my opinion, the hacking hacking sequence in Bioshock 2 is far superior to the hacking in Bioshock 1. Bioshock 1 hacking gets gets old real quick. Although it, it seems to be, the, the community seems to be split on that. Like pretty pretty evenly half and half. A lot of people like the hacking in Bioshock 1 better, but I'm, I'm much more a fan of the uh, hacking in Bioshock 2. So we place three proxy grenades down. I accidentally reloaded, so hopefully it doesn't make me reload before I can place these other three. Okay, good. There's, there we go. There's phase one done, phase two. We want to start reloading as we're heading towards this body. That that way it causes him to reload as we're running up here to save time. All right. And we're gonna go phase three. We are almost done. I'll give you a countdown. We're getting close, but we are almost there. So one. Oh, oh no. One, two. Oh, wow. Three, three, four. There we go. We're gonna be done in about five, four, three, two, one. That is the end of the run. Got it. Yeah, hacking Bioshock one sucks. I agree. Yeah, GG. Thank you very much. There we go. We'll go ahead and uh. Let the ending play on out here. Um, otherwise, that's it for me. That's that's all the Bioshocks that I got for you. So, thanks for having me for for this game and for Bioshock to all collectibles. Oh, and and I'm doing. I forgot. We got a little a little uh, uh, cameo by my my Chihuahua Bentley. He's uh, been hanging out inside my shirt the whole time. That's what he does. There he is, the Terror Bentley. He likes to say hi when when I'm done with my runs. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. That's all the Bioshocks. Otherwise, I will go ahead and uh, let the cutscene play out, and uh, I'll just kind of chill, and you can transition on over to the next run whenever you guys are ready.